This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 47, on the 13th of February 2014, a feature on Feed.fm. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the delivery platform used by leading independent labels, distributors and aggregators around the world, on ci-info.com. This is the Digital Music Trends One to One Show, and this week an interview with uh, uh, Kevin King, Director of Business Development at uh, Feed.fm. So hi Kevin, and thanks for joining me, how's it going? Of course, going very well. Thank you. It's great to have you. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the company, FeedFM. So first of all, tell me all about what it is, uh, you know, for a short elevator pitch, I guess, of what the company does. Sure. So FeedFM is, is plain and simple internet radio for uh, brands and business. Uh, it's a DMCA compliant uh, internet radio solution um, that's legal and popular music for brands and business. That's fantastic. And so how did you get the idea for the company, first of all, and how did it uh, first develop? Sure. So uh, the co-founders of FeedFM uh, actually came up with the idea um, over a year ago. Um, and it really kind of came out of another product called Blip.fm, which is, was pretty popular and still is um, uh, around the world. Uh, Blip came out of the early days of, of Twitter. And you know the the founders really saw an opportunity um, to, to to really create a social music solution, uh, putting context around songs that you're listening to, so that anyone can be a DJ. Um, it's the same functionality as as Twitter. You can follow people, hashtags, and whatnot. But in that process, we learned that um, the content um, wasn't legal. Yeah. So. We we had a lot of we had a few run-ins with uh, the major labels and publishers and whatnot. So out of that, um, these guys really saw an opportunity to uh, to really leverage what what people, especially in the states, are doing around internet radio. Pandora has really paved the way for um, just a new way to consume music yeah. and discover music. And also in that process, we identified that um, you know brands and business, there's never been a solution um, to put what we like to call in-store play music for web, mobile, and social. Um, so if you're familiar with Muzak, it's it's kind of the, the Muzak model, but a uh, mobile and web world. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so essentially, you know, uh, when the company started, what was your first port of call when you, when you thought, you know, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to find a legal solution that is uh, compliant and that we can provide uh, to the industry, uh, you know, how did you go about finding your first clients? Well, the the first the first um, really what, what what happened first was that we had to go and secure the agreements with the publishers, yeah. uh, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC here in the United States. Obviously, that's different for every country, uh, but it's the same agreements that Pandora, Songza, um, all those guys have, um, and. Once that was secure, that took you know well over a year to get that in place. Um, but we we knew we couldn't just go out of the box to uh, you know big marquee names until we had something to prove. Yeah. Um, so uh, over the summer, we we went to a lot of really just friends and family, just people that had websites, mobile apps, and you know just really were like, hey, let's give this a shot. Let's just see what happens. This summer, it was literally a science experiment. It was. Let's let's just see if what we think is true. Let's prove this out, and and we were right. The session times increased between two hundred and seven hundred percent. We did lots of A to B tests of uh, you know session time without music and session time with. Yeah. And it was just you know it was just a whole it was a huge increase um, in session time because it was interactive popular music yeah. um, that that drew people in there's a lot of contextuality around um the music that we played was conducive to the brand whether it was big or small um in one case we did a, a site for baby clothes which is one of my friends and she was just shocked at how big her analytics were um you know adding music to it that she curated um and what's great about this is people can actually listen to this uh, on a mobile device. Right. So you're putting what we like to call brand in hand. Um, our holy grail is for someone to Shazam a song 
in an urban outfitters or a top man and literally walk out of the store with brand in hand. Yeah. Instead of listening to Pandora with a song you just discovered, you're listening to Urban Outfitters Radio as you leave the store. So there's a lot of social referral that can happen. There's a lot of uh, what we call cultural currency that brands really love. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's legal and popular. And that's what these guys are, are so interested in um, because it's been so hard to license music up until now. Yeah. You know, doing one-offs with publishers and labels and managers is it's tough. It's uh, it's very arduous and it's expensive. Yeah. And we wanted to cut all of that out, and make it extremely turnkey. Um, so our first like real like big opportunity, big uh, marquee name is Anheuser Busch. We um, I've got a it's I mean it's a uh, awesome quick story. I'll, I'll tell you real quick that. Uh, I learned through a friend that a guy at Anheuser Busch was like was really looking to do electronic music, and, and they literally had a stack of agreements, you know, piled high of trying to do one-offs with various artists. And we, you know, we come along and, and basically negate that whole process. That we can create that um, solution for them in 30 minutes. And so it was, it was just a no-brainer to do that. So what we did with with those guys was um, uh, an in news feed Facebook player right. so that you can actually um, play, just like you would a YouTube video, you would actually play their electronic music radio, uh, Bud Light Platinum, in the news feed. And the engagement was 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 awesome. You know, it was, uh, I think once, you know, we're kind of getting into this this phase with Facebook and Twitter of, of a like is is sort of like 1.0 yeah. and you know brands and business are looking for more than just a like um you know much more engagement deep engagement and you know we feel like internet radio is 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 just that yeah sure and uh, looking at uh, the process as well i think uh, i want to make it a little bit clearer to to our listeners as well as to how uh, the process works and how the you know what kind of music uh, is uh, available for choice and, and, and how that integrates into, into the whole mix. So uh, say that, you know, uh, you know, you work with the McDonald's, you work with Bud Light. So, so say that a brand comes to you, uh, what kind of catalogs they have available? How, how can they explore it? What's the best way for them to find music that fits their brand to use as part of the Feed FM experience? Sure. So it's, it's, they can use literally any track in the, I mean, any recorded track in the history of music. Right. Um, we're, we have, um, quite a few hundred thousand tracks in our collection, um, that the, the brand can choose from, but in a lot of cases, these guys already have either a playlist or the content already in house. Yeah. So they can either associate with our existing content, um, or upload their own tracks into right. our system. And that, that fits within your licensing framework for 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 the for service, yeah. That's right. So our service is is, is built on uh, the DMCA Digital Millennium uh, okay, uh, right. Copyright Act, and so we're you know everything we do is very compliant to that to Internet Radio. So um, so the tracks for the most part, either come from our in-house collection or, like I said, from uh, whatever company we're working with, their own yeah. collection. Um, but once it's uploaded and, and, and applied to our player, it then becomes a, a licensed, uh, you know, co compliant piece of content. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you know, a lot of cases, some of these big brands already have an idea of what their sonic branding is. Uh, Anheuser Busch is a great example. You know, if you looked at all of their different brands of Budweiser, Bud Light, Bud Light Platinum, there's already been like a, a serious vetting process. And I think a lot of brands are going through this around the world. Like, who who do we associate in, in music? Are yeah. we electronic? Are we Coldplay? Are we, you know, uh, Mumford and Sons? Whatever that might be. And, and so there's already been some heavy lifting that that has happened. Um, that you know, we can just create you know great radio based on that sonic branding. 
Yeah. Of course. And looking at some of the things you've done, like, for example, you've worked with uh, uh, McDonald's on a, on a mobile optimized radio experience as well, I can see from the site. And so uh, how, how did that plug into, uh, you know, their branding uh, experience for the consumers? So um, McDonald's is, is, is pretty interesting. Um, we're working uh, throughout the Northeast um, with several McDonald's locations. And what we're, we're learning is they especially are a very mobile consumer that makes it just makes perfect sense i mean you're likely on the go if you go to mcdonald's if you're a mcdonald's consumer um that activity is likely not going to happen on the desktop um so we i mean the numbers that we get back are i mean it's it's almost 100 percent mobile versus versus web right so we wanted to make something that was optimized for for that consumer and and also uh, with McDonald's, we're, we're also taking into account that this consumer is highly likely multicultural. Yeah. So uh, it wouldn't make sense to just program uh, a radio that's just conducive to a certain genre. We need to be applying it to all kinds of uh, cultures, and especially here in New York City, uh, where there is every possible uh, cultural you know, there, there's, it could be Latin music, Spanish music, um, you know, all kinds of different Music and, and and most of this has never been done before, so it's, it's very exciting to um, to create something that uh, uh, a fan of music might never associate with a brand like McDonald's. Yeah. Um, that they're actually bringing new discovery in music uh, on the backs of, of a recognizable brand. Um, so it's it's pretty. In most cases, people are discovering music in the traditional ways. You know, whether it's terrestrial radio or um, in some cases, Spotify lately, uh, but not everybody uses Spotify and everyone uses Pandora. Yeah. Um, so what we, what we see as the opportunity is it, it's free to the consumer. I mean, it's, it's free radio. Um, and it's, it's experiential advertising yeah. and, you know, so McDonald's is, is in a really interesting space to, to provide that to consumers. Um, you know, it's, is, you know, if you look at a lot of what Mashable is writing about right now, it's it's really advertising is kind of taking this new turn towards providing a utility to the consumer. That um, you know, internet radio is a really interesting way to provide that utility, sort of a Swiss Army knife for advertising. That I can uh, be in the car and listen to branded radio, um, but it doesn't feel obtrusive. Yeah. It's, you know, you're providing utility uh, for my life. Um, you know, if I socially share or I come back to the, to the in most cases, this is the, the streaming of the music is happening on their mobile website or in most cases on their website. So that contextual, um, that contextuality actually creates, um, you know, increased session time, like I was saying, but also that you're, you're actually seeing uh, content from the brand, yeah. uh, and you know, once once we can really scale this, uh, we, we'd love to see you know more purchases made. If it's a case of an Urban Outfitters, uh, you know, people sharing that they're listening to Urban Outfitters on on Twitter or Facebook, and you know, creating what we like to call social referral. Yeah, that you know, friends are coming in and seeing the new spring line from. Uh, you know, from whatever retailer we might be working with, that's where we get really excited about the opportunity. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm quite fascinated by the idea of uh, location aware awareness as well. Just uh, thinking about global brands, you know, you're talking about Urban Outfitters. Uh, thinking if you know somebody goes to the Shoreditch shop, getting a different experience than somebody going to the Brooklyn uh, shop in, in New York, and so. Uh, how it, does that work in the sense that, you know, of course, uh, are you developing your own technology to implement that or are you looking at third party solutions to enable uh, sort of geolocation of playlists uh, depending on where the users are located? Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's really that's awesome. Um, I mean, to date, we've not cracked that code. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good to, to make super certain that right now our agreements are with U.S. publishers. Yeah. So the content has to be consumed in the United States. Um, I mean, obviously, we created uh, location aware that, that unfortunately, if that player is presented in London, 
yeah. it wouldn't it just wouldn't play the music just yeah. for, okay so yeah i guess like we, we can like uh, switch it to a la and new york situation instead <laughs> right yeah it would be a different um that that's you know when you look at stuff like uh what apple's doing with uh ibeacon um there's definitely some things that we can we can consider uh you know in the next six to twelve months around delivering uh location aware content um that you know there's parts of if you consider LA, there's parts of LA, a great example would be McDonald's in Los Angeles. It could be the McDonald's in Santa Monica could be a completely different content experience versus the one in East LA. Yeah. Um, that's, that's definitely something that we'll, we'll consider, you know, in very short term. Absolutely. Um, that's, and then the great thing is that we have a dashboard that, uh, that picks up all of the data around the player usage. So location, skips of the actual music thumbs up thumbs down um the session time how long they actually listen to it um you know all that really good granular data we pick up um that the brands and business really like to see sure. and uh you know on the mt i also got a lot of developers that are tuning into the show because i started actually uh, covering uh, startups and uh, music hack days back in 2009 so uh uh, you have a, an API with FitFM, uh, which is uh, actually quite prominent on the site. So, uh, of course, that's not something that, uh, you know, brand uh, people would uh, jump onto when they see the link to the API. So uh, in that in that respect, uh, do, do you get a lot of uh, developers that might be working for brands or for agencies that come in and, and play with the API to see what they can do with the platform? Yeah, I mean, to date, it's been a lot of, um, we've got actually gotten a lot of traction with uh, developers. Um, you know, we're working with Unity. Um, we're talking to companies like Shopify, which, you know, Shopify has 80,000 uh, websites um, that just normal people, just like with Etsy, have just a, a website. And now they can apply popular music to their site to create, you know, just awareness of who, who they are yeah. um, using popular music. And in most cases, it's it's very affordable for these guys to, to do that. But, but yeah, we, we think it'd be really exciting to see what developers can come up with. I mean, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty green pastures. I mean, we've already laid out the terms and conditions of how to use the radio, but yeah. as far as the way it's presented, um, the way it's designed, um, you know, all that stuff is, is open for anyone to kind of, you know, to, to create a, a solution that maybe we have haven't even thought of it yet, but yeah, sure. the base, you know the basic IP of the company is that it's 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 um, you know it's licensed internet radio. That Absolutely. And I, of course, we don't want to kind of scare people off by talking about just big brands. So, you know, what kind of level do you start working with companies who can use uh, Feed.fm? Uh, uh, you know, is there? You know, of course, you know. I guess there's questions that some people that are listening to the show might be must be might be asking themselves right now. It, it, it's. I mean, literally anyone, if you have a web or mobile presence, it's, we've, we've designed it so that really anyone can take advantage of it. Um, you know, our, um, our tiers start at $25 a month, um, you know, which is on par, if not less, than a Google AdWords uh, campaign. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you think about, you know, if I'm, uh, you know, a, a, a new guy that's like created a belt storefront uh, that I make belts and I want to sell them and I have a, a good idea of what my demographic is, I could create radio that's that would bring people in to listen to my radio, yeah. but contextually you're looking at my my belt collection as well. And that's what we wanna that's what we want to get to. I mean we're we're we've you know done that with you know quite a few sites. Um, and I mean, that's where we really see the opportunity, uh, yeah. big and small for you know, small guys all the way up to, you know, Ralph Lauren. Yeah. And in, in that sense, do you see people uh, implementing it in a way that, for example, if I jump on the belt side, uh, I would get like a little prompt saying, would you like to listen to the radio? Uh, that does it usually work like that? Because, for example, I, I, I usually hate autoplay, uh, but I, I don't I guess some people might implement it as autoplay and some people might just prompt it as, as an opt in thing. Right. Yeah. Well, we we've definitely. We're, we're, we're all like, you know, fans of music, but we're also internet consumers as well. So we, that was, uh, from the beginning, we didn't want to do autoplay. Yeah. It's, we want it to be user opt-in. Um, and in most cases, 
it is the, the consumer when they're met with uh, the call to action, they're press and play, yeah. which is great. And you know what's what's different about uh, what's happened in the past. Anytime it was uh, music that was uh, was autoplay, um, it usually felt like it was background music, and that's what we want to. We don't want that to to come across that way because it is um, it is curated and it is uh, recognizable popular music. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, just background music. Um, so wind chimes in the background, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the real deal. That's great. Um, so that, that's, that's something that, and plus the, the player has to be very visible. It has to, you know, it has to stand out. You have to know that it's, that it's even there. Yeah. Um, so, and what we're finding is, um, especially in the mobile app world and mobile web, um, you know, it's a whole different experience because I can walk with this radio. I can actually put the, the radio in my pocket and continue to walk. Um, if I pick it up and look at the phone, there could be something that Mega Ultra is, is a call to action they're putting in front of me. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's how it's a lot different than, than web consumption. Yeah. The, other, the other vertical that we're super excited about is gaming. Yeah. Um, that's... You know that's that's one part of this that that we just really see a huge opportunity with. Um, we're in talks with some really big players in the gaming space, um, and their their interest in popular music is completely different than say a, a you know a Skybox. They want, I mean, they obviously want to keep people in the game longer, like plain and simple. Like yeah. increased session time in gaming is is huge. It's very material for them. So keeping popular music or, or having someone tune into internet radio for a online poker or blackjack or whatever it is, um, you know, if we're increasing session time, you know, by 200%, that's, that's a huge opportunity for these gaming companies. Absolutely. So uh, most of their uh, products are, you know, social and, and mobile and web. Um, so where we get, Excited is that this this player can be implemented very easily into uh, any platform, uh, whether it's you know uh, Android, iOS, uh, any blog site, uh, social, any. It's just a simple piece of code that that rests inside of uh, an existing platform. Yeah. So, um, you know, iOS apps and Android apps are really interesting because if you think about if I'm um, you know checking out. If I go into uh, Uniqlo and um, there's a huge call to action to get their app, which they do right now, um, let's say two months from now, I'd never open the app again, and then you're push notified that there's 200 new songs. It's highly likely you're going to go consume those songs, but then you're also getting brand messaging inside yeah. the app. Um, so that's that's another aspect of this that we get super excited about. Um, that you know, music content is is like the ultimate uh, glue yeah. uh, to a to a potential business or brand. Yeah, and, and so uh, looking at the future for the company, uh, you're talking about you raised uh, uh, around in 2013, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, great. And so you're working with that right now, and uh, but uh, I'm really interested in seeing you know what what the s s scalability of, of the company is. Of course, so there's so many opportunities here, but it's also a massive job, you know, business development for you as well to <laughs> to reach out to all those potential business opportunities. And I guess there's a lot of uh, uh, work uh, that you're doing on on I guess targeting aggregators of uh, of different brands or different types of businesses that could use uh, your business as well as as an, an accessory as, as one of the services that they use. So is is that sort of the strategy that you're going for, like looking at potential, uh, you know, big deals that could give you access to a big pool of uh, potential users? Sure. So Unity is a great example. I mean, that's, you know, tens of thousands of developers that um, can use our platform. And I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely one approach. Shop, Shopify, um, Etsy, um, you know, any of these big uh, Squarespace. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, I mean, that's like a, a huge opportunity. Um, we've had some talks with Microsoft to do um, stuff with their developers. Um, but yeah, I mean that any sort of 
one-to-many approach at this stage in our company is is a huge help. Um, you know, right now it's myself and our CEO Jeff Yasuda that are actually running the BD sales channel. Um, but um, you know, it's 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 one of these things where um, you know we're getting a lot of really positive feedback. Um, so there's not a lot of consultative selling that goes on. It's it, you know you're you're coming to these guys with uh, popular music at a, at a price that's attainable. Um, so you know our sell cycles aren't as as tough as they might be with a product that people just don't get yet. I mean the time is just perfect to go uh, to go full bore with this. But certainly as as the company grows, we're going to just need more headcount. Um, you know we just can't. There's just not enough day, time in the day to manage the huge opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're right. You know, that, uh, talking about uh, brands and how they are engaging with their audience as well. You know, we're all seeing that because of the 24-hour sort of cycle of the of, of the internet and the fact that you're not thinking of campaigns in a sort of campaign-like mentality where you start and stop. Sort of always an ongoing process of engagement with the with the with the audience. Then music absolutely. can be a big glue to towards that. Yeah, you know, the, because the company is still, you know, less than a year old, um, this past, during this past holiday season, we really saw the opportunity for, say, a top man to do holiday radio. Because yeah. if you think about um, the holiday season, especially in the States, right after Thanksgiving, everyone is in holiday mode for literally for four weeks. And if your brand is the brand that sits in my home or in my car or at my desk at work, and I'm, we're actually have a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, brand to consumer dialogue through music. That's a huge opportunity. If H and M is piggybacking my holiday for four weeks, it's pretty likely you're you're gonna buy something, whether it's for your your wife, your kids, you know, whoever. Um, and we like to think that music was was that glue um, through the holidays. But you can see that for any. Any sort of, um, you know, Valentine's is coming up. Exactly, yeah. uh, during the summer, brands can create very, um, uh, you know, just lifestyle playlists. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of thing you can go back to over and over again. With that's right. Push messaging yeah. and all sorts of yeah. I think a lot of you know a lot of platforms from Beats Music to Spotify, Songs obviously has has really kind of created the the pathway to this, but. Uh, you know, highly curated contextual lifestyle playlist where you're instead of saying I like Coldplay, you're you're literally saying I'm drinking Bloody Marys, which by the way, Absolute Vodka would have an interest in knowing that you're making Bloody Marys on a Saturday morning. But here's the music that we think you should that we just suggest that you might listen to if you're making Bloody Marys. Obviously, that playlist looks like a lot different if you're making martinis. You know, a Bloody Mary playlist would probably be mid to late morning. Uh, but a martini is, that's evening music. So it's a whole different, um, you know, it's a whole different playlist. So, I mean, that's the stuff that we get super excited about is, is how we can create utility for people um, in, their, in their homes and in their cars, uh, but in the context of brands and business. That's great. Well, uh, Kevin, it was a real pleasure talking to you today. And uh... Uh, I would uh, direct people to uh, feed.fm and to developers. It's also developer.feed.fm where you can find all the documentation on the API. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing what's going to happen next with the company. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com where you can also listen to our weekly news show that comes out every Thursday or Friday where we report on the latest news in the digital music industry. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week and until next time. Yeah.